and welcome to On The Level, the new Masonic chat show for the Lewis Masonic YouTube channel. Today I'm delighted to be joined by actor Tony Scannell, who perhaps may be more familiar to you as Ted Roach from The Bill. Tony, were you aware of there being any other Freemasons in The Bill when you were working on it? No, not at all. Not at all. We're, 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 um, we sort of meet to, to do the show, and then when the show was finished, we all went home. Um, a little different to what people thought our home lives were, because you know, you'd have to be up at five o'clock in the morning, and you wouldn't finish until about eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night sometimes. Tell me, Tony, when you were playing Ted Roach, did you base him on anybody that you actually knew from the police force? I used him actually as an amalgam of, of um, about three or four detective sergeants that I had actually met um, during the first processes of doing the bill. A couple of sergeants, detective sergeants, um, took me out for a drink one night to, um, to meet their clientele, really, so to speak. And so I had a, a, an idea of the way that they behaved which was totally different to the way that you would expect a normal person to be. Not badly, they didn't speak about but they had a, the sergeants, they had a sort of a, a timbre about them. They were very strong and silent, mostly silent, until you asked a question and then they would um, evade it as, as much as they could before they would tell you something. <laughs> but I got on very well with them and I, I basted, like my tie at the time, loosely. On, um, on two or three of the police there. Tony, whilst you were on the bill, did you ever meet anybody who perhaps gave you any dodgy handshake? Yes, yeah, well, I did, but it only occurred to me that that's what they were doing about six or seven years later when, um, when I showed a, a want, really. It was wonderful. I mean, it, the whole concept of it was exactly what I what I wanted from I was I felt as though I was losing or or not had gained certain parts of my life um, although you know being a mason didn't fulfill all of them it certainly fulfilled the bonhomie and uh, became sort of a part of a fraternity really um, of good men how long have you been a mason now tony three full years master mason and very proud of it. Tony, when you went to the lodge room and you were being prepared to be made a mason, were you worried at all about any part of the ceremony? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, yes, I was, uh, truthfully. Um, I, I just didn't know what to expect, first of all, and then um, one or two of the chaps would say, it, it's, it's, um, it's all right, most of it is all right, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be fine. Um, it's just that we're just waiting for the goat to arrive. <laughs> and uh, instead of sort of laughing it off, I, inside me I went, what, 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 what do you mean? And uh, they said, look, don't worry about it. Don't, for heaven's sake, don't worry about it. We won't let anything happen to you or anything. Just, uh, just, just. And a little after that, a little while after that, when I was going through the initiation, I suddenly, there was a part of it came of where I suddenly realised why I wanted to be there. And I suddenly realised to a great degree who I was. And that was that I suddenly had in some sort of epiphany maybe, I don't know, but that, that I trusted them. And I hadn't trusted people before. Not that I mistrust people naturally, but that I never got round to trusting people. And suddenly, here it was, all in front of me, a complete trust. And it, the fraternity idea suddenly, suddenly meant something to me. Before you became a Freemason, did you feel that perhaps you'd lost any faith in your fellow man? I think so. Yes, I've, 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 I'd reached an age, really. I'd reached 60. And I thought, like the song, you know, I thought, well... Is that all there is, my friends? Then let's keep dancing. But that's what I thought. And, and I had been questioning lots of things over the between sort of 45 and 60. And I, I just kept saying, this, what's, what's wrong with my life? What, what is wrong with it? There were parts of it just, just needed to be 
sorted out, you know. I don't know why it happened. I thought it would be, it would be, it would be terrible to die without ever having lived. And of course, we all live in a certain way, and a lot of us only just, just manage to, you know. But I think if you're happy inside, all the pleasures that are outside and all the, the bad things that are outside will go away. They will be held in abeyance by the way that you feel inside. And you've got to be happy and try to be happy inside. Mm. Tony, you have a unique accent. In fact, some people think you are Welsh, but you're not Welsh, are you? I'm from Kinsale in County Cork and the most wonderful, wonderful town in the country or in the world, actually. I've been out of Ireland now for such a long time, since I was, well, since I was 14 and just went back to school there when I was living with my grandmother. My father was an a Irish international footballer and so consequently he was um, playing football all the time in England and... Um, and I was left with my grandmother. And one sister was with me in Ireland and the other sister was with my other two brothers. So we were a mi complete mixed family. So I came from Ireland to England and I never ended up with an English accent. So I always thought that I must have got lost in the <laughs> valleys somewhere when I came. So it was Ireland, England... And Wales in the middle, so or I, I always like Burton anyway, and, and, and Tony. And. Now, Lewis Masonic is the largest Masonic publisher in Europe, and I'd like to ask you: Are you actually reading anything with a Masonic connection at the moment? Oh yes, 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 yes. Um, it's uh, Dan Brown. It's his third book, I think. It, it's called The Lost Symbol, and it, it's it's quite amazing because it's got the capital Washington on the cover, and then you begin to wonder about actually what's happening in the world and um, how close are we to um, find strange things going on. That's not necessarily that they have to be Masonic, but Mas the Masons have actually done so many things for the world right, right back, but especially in America. I mean, if you look at the dollar bill, the pyramid and the eye and all the uh, significance to, uh, to Masonry. Now, Tony, there will be people watching this who aren't Freemasons, but would you have any words of advice for those who are considering becoming a Mason? Well, I wouldn't say that I've given them any advice, but I certainly would be able to say I wish that I'd thought of it 20 years or 30 years earlier, or I wish that I had come across it 20 or 30 years. Because a lot of the new people now, a lot of the people coming in, are very, very young which has surprised me, I must admit, because I didn't think that people were interested in that sort of thing. But it's, it's great that the youth are interested, very interested. Tony, when you first became a Freemason, were you surprised at the other people who were also on the square? Yes, that, that, that one, one special one, of course, was um, a, a captain, um, ex-captain um, in, in, the, in the guards or something, um, and we were we were just at a at a dinner do I was in sort of black tie and that and he was in his uniform, because I'm new to masonry I I don't cop on quick quick enough to various things little little signs that that are made to um to find out who you know who is a mason and who is not and sometimes there's a, a slight pressure that's that's put on a part of your hand from the other person, um, and I thought. Oh gosh, I better go around again and maybe a little later shake hands again because I might have missed something. <laughs> and they say, Oh yes, oh yes, he yes, he did it that way. Or did I just miss his hand? I don't know. I'll have to check that out. Or you know, you you'd um, you'd look at the way the person is standing and you think, Ooh, is that um is that a special one from from for masonry or, or have I missed out again? So it was quite good fun. Now, Tony, obviously you're in craft Freemasonry, but as you know, there are a number of other side orders like Knights Templar or Rosicrucians. Have you got any plans to join any of these other side orders? Well, I, I must admit that I did and have for a long time thought about the Knights Templar, but only because it's quite romantic, isn't it? You know, I could fancy myself on, on a horse with the lance and all that and the etiquette and the chivalry and, you know, what it conjures up, the name Knights Templar. Yes. 
I must ask, because I know everyone will be dying to know, do you have any other projects that you're currently working on at the moment? Yes, yes I am. I'm working on a wonderful script uh, by John Mangan. I can't, I can't get over actually how good the script is. I think it's going to be a winner, personally. And on top of that, we have a wonderful director, very, very good, Martin Pick. He's easy, he's easy to work with, and he's a wonderful, as I said, a wonderful director, an award-winning director. Uh, great cameraman, good sound. What more do you want? Can you tell us the name of the film? Yes. It's called The Haunting of Harry Payne. I play Harry Payne. And do you know, well, can you share with us whether Harry is haunted by ghosts or is it uh, other demons that he's being pursued by? Oh, I don't think I'll be giving too much away <laughs> if I say that um, there's a lot of um, Masonic information in it. And it's also demons, I would say, inner demons. But no more than that. You pay your money like everybody else. <laughs> Tony, thank you very much for joining us today on On The Level. It's been a real pleasure to have you here. Perhaps you'd be prepared to come back and join us again another time. I would love to do that. Thank you, Tony. Thank you.